Okay, good morning, good uh, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, for, and thank you for joining us uh, at the VARO March webinar. Um, before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping items to get everyone on the same page. Um, we do, there is a Q&A section to the bottom right of this uh, window that you're looking at, the event window, so make sure to send us your questions during the session. Um, we have a, uh, some team members on standby um, to help answer those questions, so let us know. We will have the transcript of the Q&A posted publicly after, after the session, and if we don't get your question during, we will try to answer it afterwards and have it posted as well. The recording and the, and the um, slides and materials of the webinar will be um, provided, and we'll email it out, out to everyone um, after the session, and you can find it on the community or uh, our YouTube channel. So if you have to leave halfway, or you have a friend who, could, who couldn't join us today, don't worry about missing the information. Uh, last but not least, we have a one-minute survey after the event ends, so make sure you let us know you know, how we did during the session, what do you think, and also, more, most importantly, what future topics you would like to see at our webinars. And then uh, we re do read every comment, so let us know what you think and make sure to fill it out. Uh, going to the agenda, so today we will, cut, or we will <clears throat> um, cover all the different ways and places that you can use Wireshark, Wireshark on Viral, and this is a very popular question from our users, so we're making this a one-stop shop tutorial on, you know, all the packet capture capabilities. Um, we also have a uh, tutorial thread up on the community, which I will link to everyone in the chat box uh, in a little bit. So if you want to look up, like, you know, read the written details, you, you can have it there. Um, and then after that, we'll have a sneak peek on the new uh, upcoming Viral April release. There's some new features as well as updated virtual machine images. So we'll make sure to check that out when it's uh, made available. And we will, of course, uh, update you on the newsletter. And then at the end, we'll have some time for Q&A. So first up, we actually, we have uh, Alejandro who will be covering uh, the packet capture session. So let me hand the ball over. Ali, all yours. All right, thanks, Val. And actually, can you switch that over to my other Alejandro in there? I gotcha. All right. So there you go. Thank you. All right. So again, thank you everybody for for coming. And this is going to be a um, quick little run through with some on packet captures and some of the fun details about it. Um, give me one second. Let me get my share here. And, uh, all right. Okay. I hope that's, uh, that's coming through and then everybody can see that. So again, at some point, since we're everybody, since we're all playing with, with networking, at some point we're gonna have to do some packet captures to try to figure out what's going on. So in Viral, there's no difference. Uh, we have a feature just for us to go in and actually do, this, do exactly that on all our different, on all the interfaces. Um, So on, on all the interfaces that we have within the simulation. And is the audio good? Okay. All right. Just to make sure that everything's working as expected. So so how where what how do we um how do we do all this stuff? So we're going so I'm gonna go through and we're gonna cover on um, from where can we do packet captures, how to do them, how to get them, and how to manipulate the captures once we uh, once we do have it. From well, actually, before we start, there are a couple of prerequisites. Um, and this is probably for the few people out there who are still running on Windows. Um, we do need um, a small application it's called Netcat. Unfortunately, Windows does not include that application, so you would have to go out to the internet and, and download it. Um, you have two options. One 
is to download just the NetCap executable all by itself. Another is to download and install ZenMap, uh, which is a port sniffing application. For this, for my demonstration, I am, I am using ZenMap because it's a nicely, neatly packaged all together, um, and I can call with our scripts that we have um, that that single Netcat application right, right from there, um, which we'll cover a little bit later in yeah, a little bit later in the show. <laughs> and so, all right. So, how or actually, from where can we get packet captures? Most of us use VMIstro. So, from VMIstro. We can, once you have your simulation running and you're looking at your topology, um, you can select any of the links just by highlighting them and you'll see an RJ45 icon at either end. If you right click on that icon, you're able to get um, the drop down menu and we have packet captures. Click on create new and you get our little window here. There are two there are two forms or rather two modes of packet capture that, that we can do from uh, from viral. The first one is offline packet capture, which is as the title implies, is just we collect it, we send it off to a file, and then the user can go in later, get that capture and download it and view it on Wireshark. The other is a live is a live capture, which is as also as the name implies, is that we can essentially do a stream. We can watch all the all the packets flow um, as as they happen. You can uh, for live packet captures, you can create or actually uh, give a live port, um, or or leave it as automatic, so the, the system will actually go through and just select the port that's available. Um, we'll cover that more a little bit later. Uh, the PCAP filter, um, is, there are PCAP filters. If you're not familiar with PCAP um, or how to create, get those filters, uh, you can just click on this little link right here, um, and that will take you to uh, tcpdump.org. And here's all everything you want to know on how to create uh, PCAP filters. Uh, I will go, we will go through, and I'll show you some, some, some simple ones, some basic ones, some somewhat common. The other part of, for the um, the other options that we have available to us is the packet count, size, and time. You can you can define all of all three, or you can leave all three blank. If you define all three, just note that whichever one we hit first, that's what will actually stop the packet capture automatically. Um, if you know for say if you want to do something that's going to take about say a minute, you can set it for 60 seconds to equal your minute. Once the time is up, the packet capture will stop and no more is written to that file. So, so we'll go ahead and just uh, we'll kick one off here on that port, say OK, and that will get that started. If for some reason, when you, when you start off the, the capture, you want to know where it's at, OK? So we can recall the window that I just closed two different ways. One, by right-clicking on that on that link again, go to Packet Captures, and open the Captures view. Also, from a, from the drop-down menu in the toolbar, Show View Packet Captures. So, where else can we get a capture from? Since we can work with a simulation from two different places. One being VM Maestro, and the other being UWM. So in UWM is another place where we can initiate our, our captures themselves. Once you have a simulation running, log in as the user to launch the simulation. Remember that UWM admin is not allowed to launch simulations. Okay, so I'm just log in as guest, password guest. Let's try that again. And there's my landing page. Right towards the bottom, I see my simulation down here. I can click on that, go straight to it. And here we go. So depending on your, on your topology, this page right here can be extremely long. 
but we can also apply filters to help us squash down all all the interfaces all the interfaces that you may have in your simulation. Also note that right here is where we're going to see all our traffic captures as we create them. So for example, from here I want to create another packet capture, but I want to create it on a specific switch and I want it to be on switch 4. So we can filter for switch 4. Here's all my all my interfaces for switch 4. But also note that it's also all, my, all interfaces that point to switch for based on my um, topology configuration. So since they are labeled as such, they will come up here in my filter. So for example, let's go to this interface that points to switch three. I can click on the eyeball. And that brings me up the exact same menu that we just saw in VM Maestro. Same options. Now there's just a radio button. Do offline or live. You select live. The live port is now, we can change it if we wanted to. And we're just going to leave that blank. Our PCAP filter, do we want to apply a PCAP filter or not? We can put in there just something basic like ICMP. And the same thing, our packet counts. Do we want to say capture X amount of packets, size, or seconds? I'm just going to say for right now, we'll just say 10 seconds. Let me just let that run. Say create. All right, we'll scroll back down. And now we see our two captures currently running. One's offline, the other one is live on port 10010. All right, so the offline capture, which is running, I can go ahead and click on it and fetch the capture data, which is the PCAP file. I can download it, and once I download it, I can open a bar shark and begin to view it. Okay, so we'll play with that a little bit later. So so also another thing to note is that no matter where you decide to launch the, the packet capture, um, it's, it's always going to be synchronized to both sides. So we'll be able to see it both here in VM Maestro and as well on UWM. Okay. So, so now like so now let's see what, like, what actually what this could look like once we begin to uh, play around with it. So we know that we can launch it from VM Maestro. We know that we can launch the packet capture from UWM. Um, but now how can we actually uh, play around with it? So we do have this one packet capture running right now on this port. Um, to, to view it, what we'll do is, w thanks to the input actually from both um, one of our developers, Ralph Sch Schmieder, and also um, another, another actually Discord or viral user, uh, his name is Flex in the community. Based on the input that they they gave or shared with us, I created another little a couple of scripts uh, for Windows and also one for uh, for Mac to make it a little more user friendly or being really making uh, more generic. So this script right here, if we just double click it, it launches this little window and asks two basic questions. One was the IP address of the server. Two, what is the port number that we want to connect to? Um, and I will go into a little bit deeper in, in a few as far as like how the script works and how you can make it uh, unique to your system so you don't always have to put in your IP address. So put in my IP address of my viral server, my port 010. And that opens up my Wireshark. Okay, so we did apply a filter to that capture. And then switch for on this interface. But I want to know really what where is it in my simulation? So we click, so right click, reveal in simulation, 
and we'll notice that our link is highlighted as well as the switch is also highlighted. Okay, perfect. So from here, I can go through and say, so let's go to server four. Let's connect to his console. Log in, default Cisco Cisco. And I'm going to do a ping, but since I'm not sure where I want to ping or which way it's going to go, um, I'm just going to do a broadcast ping and see what happens with 10. Oh, I think you waited too long. All right. So let's quit that. Oh, no. We, I forgot that actually there was a time limit on that. So let's kill this. So let's, so let's not just redo this capture. We can delete it from here since it is a live capture. It just deletes the actual capture itself. It doesn't delete any, any, any anything that we actually have because nothing is stored on the server. Now, in contrast, though, this capture here, we have an option to either download or delete. Delete is just what, do, what you would think it would do, just actually removes the file altogether. Now, we can choose to download it. Uh, it would give me the name with a timestamp. I'm fine. Default location is my captures. That's fine. Say OK. And do I want to view it now? Nah, no. Let's not do that. Okay, so now I have what I want. I can go back here and delete it. And now the capture is gone. So let's go to this interface. Create new. We're going to do a live capture this time. I'm going to leave the port as automatic. Filter. I'm going to say ICMP. But I also want ARP messages just to see, you know, how do we, you know, how are we discovering or are we sending out discovery messages? So, and ARP, let's see if that works. I'm going to leave the, all the capture limits blank, leave the max, we'll say OK. Up, and we got an error. So, one thing to, to note for the PCAP filters, we're looking for attributes of the, of the capture itself or rather of the packets that are being sent. So since a packet can't be a unicast and a broadcast at the same time, we, this, is, this would be an expected error. So let's, let's go back in and let's change that. So I want ICMP and I also want ARP, but the better syntax would be ICMP or ARP to get any packets that are flowing that are ICMP packets or any packet that is flowing that's an ARP packet. All right, that's a bit better. So now we have a new port. Go back to my script. Oops. Close that. Double click it. So if you're always using the same, ser same server, you can see why having to put in the IP address every single time can be kind of annoying. Um, so again, we will cover that a little bit later as far as like, how to change that. All right, so now that's running. Let's go back to VM Astro and ping. And as expected, there's my ICMP. If we let this sit here for a little bit, or if we ping an address that we don't know about, we should see some ARP messages. So if we do a ping to 72.16.50.4. And let's see, let's do And there are our messages there. I'm trying to figure out what that IP address. We're not going to respond because that doesn't exist. Okay. So, so we've covered that 
where we can start the captures. We can, we can start them from VM Maestro. We can start them from UWM. Um, we can manipulate them from either from either side. Um, and we can also um, manipulate them from Wireshark itself. For the live captures, um, you can just stop it by, by just closing this window. That's, that stops the sockets, and now we're not, as you can see, that our Wireshark is no longer running, and we're not capturing anything in, any longer. So at this point, it's just typical stuff. If I decide to close it, I can choose to save it or quit without saving. Okay, so let's do something else that, 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 I, that I kind of think is a little more fun, and it and actually helps us with uh, collaboration. So I have my, my system running here on a Windows box, um, but I also have a colleague that's on a Mac, and he, he wants to essentially interact with me on, on the same server. So we want to see um, how we're sending information out into the cloud. So let's create a new one here, and here we're going to say UDP port 53. Say OK. And we'll get that started. So Val, if you don't mind, can you um, change presenter to Alejandro Mac? Yeah. Um, All right, thank you. Uh, okay. Okay, great. So Here's my VM Maestro. So I've already launched it, and I'm connected to the same server, CD.245. So and see that I have the topology here, because in this particular case, I'm going to say that I don't have the topology uh, on, on, on this particular box. Right? So all the topologies are stored local based on your um, VM Maestro installation location. So, but I do want to see it. So I can just go here. I can either double click the name of the simulation, or do a right click and say view simulation. And here pops it up. Uh, also note that we're also able to see our, our captures down here. So what I'm gonna do, uh, we're gonna send a, a frame, or rather a, a packet for destination on port 53 for a DNS from server four. Um, but I wanna view it here on my Mac. Uh, whoops, sorry, give me one second, I need to share a term. Okay, great. So we have, again, same thing, uh, uh, we have another little um, script that's going to run here to, to launch and open Wireshark for us and, uh, and capture that. On a Mac and Linux, it's a little bit different than on Windows. On Mac and Linux, we do need to actually um, or connect to a really a non-existent port. Uh, to do that, we're going to open up Wireshark. And uh, let me share that. From our interfaces, we're going to say manage interfaces, go to pipes, add a new pipe. Unfortunately, every time you quit Wireshark, you will have to re-enter this path. Um, the path is actually here, so if, we, if I do a cat. So this is the script that we're going to be running. And here is the path to my uh, fake file. You can copy that. Drop it here. Once you have this pasted in place, you need to hit enter for it to accept. Say okay. 
And now notice that there's another window that's hidden here, which can be kind of annoying because I won't be able to start this until I actually acknowledge that other window and this, this guy. So we can go ahead and click Start. Okay, and here's our interface. All right. So to start our, our capture from this side, I'm going to call the script and my port, which I've forgotten, which is uh, 113. Give the IP address of my server. All right, and now that is open. Go back to my Wireshark and click Start. So there's nothing happening right now. So I'm on server four. So let me see if I can get uh, some DNS messages. I'm going to say dig google.com at 172.16.3. There's my response, and there it is. So, so what we talked about is like how to how to start Wireshark. I'm sure we can start it from UWM and also from VM Maestro. We can also uh, collaborate by, through either VM Maestro or through UWM from different locations, having connectivity back to the same server. Offline packet captures are all stored locally on the on the VM Maestro, wherever you launch VM Maestro. So if I if I start an offline capture and I stop it here, then I can either choose to delete it, which deletes the file, or I can choose to download it and it would be stored uh, on this local instance of uh, of VM Maestro. And by default we keep them here in my captures file. For for live captures, there are they're not sent anywhere, it's just an open socket. So once you're done with the live capture, you would need to stop uh, Wireshark, download it locally, and save it, save it as needed. Um, there, in, in the post that I created earlier, um, there are some links to, to other, this, sorry, other community posts which, uh, that I have more explanation on the scripts that we have available to you. Um, and also uh, links for Nmap if you choose to download Nmap or Zenmap really uh, for for Windows installations. Um, I also included some some really some basic packet captures that you can play around with uh, on or rather not packet captures but filters that you can play around with on uh, on, on your simulations on on the post that will be following the webinar today. And yeah, unless there's any other questions, that uh, we're pretty much all wrapped up. Thanks, Val. No problem. Thank you, Ali. Uh, as mentioned before, <clears throat> we'll have the recording um, posted, and also there is a uh, tutorial link that Alejandro created on our community, which we will also provide um, after the session, so you can follow along all the information. And now we're going to pass the ball to Joel. Joel, you ready? Yeah, all set, Valerie. All right. All righty. Thank you very much. So uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, yep, we have a new version of Viral in the works at the moment. We're very close to getting that all wrapped up. Um, so hopefully, you know, this will be making its way out in the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, obviously, we will be putting information out on the Twitter feed, on the newsletter, etc. So you'll get the, uh, all the information when that is actually going out. But we want to give you a view and show you some of the new features and capabilities that are going to be coming in the uh, in the new release. So uh, first up. Um, this is not the complete set of everything that's going to be in here, but just some of the highlights. Um, we have got new virtual machine images in the works at the moment. Um, so a new IOSV image, also a new CSR1KV image. 
I know a lot of people have been asking, when, when, when are we going to see a new iOS D layer 2 image? I'm afraid we don't have any news on when that is going to be uh, coming out. We're very disappointed, and um, uh, we had hoped to have, have something new and available for you with a bunch of new features. It's been much trailed, but uh, the code is just not of the quality that we're happy with of putting it out, I'm afraid. So I'm afraid it's going to be a case of being patient. Um, that There is a new version in the works. It's just not at the point that we're, we're happy with. Um, so very sorry to, to pass on that news. But new CSR 1KV image, I just want to make a note about that. So there's a change that's happening in the release number. So previously, CSR 1KV images, the last one we had was a 318 image. They are changing that numbering convention to be consistent with other iOS uh, images. So whereas it was 318, you know, 317 prior to that, um, it's now dropped. That numbering convention is now being replaced. So the new image is going to be called 1621. Okay, so it is a lead on from the previous version, the 318 image that we've had previously, uh, but just got a new numbering convention. Okay, um, a new resource is up and available for you. If you take a look at the link here, so viral.cisco.com slash resource, this is a very simple uh, calculator for you. So you can dial in a particular simulation you can list the number of uh, machines that you've got there. Say, well, you know, I'm thinking of designing an environment that looks like this. I'm going to have X many iOS VL2s, a bunch of uh, XRV 9000s, because I'm, I'm, I'm working on something large, or, or I've got a lot of computers to write it. And the system will give you an estimate. And it is only an estimate, because obviously it depends on what else you're running on your system, as to how much memory and CPU the system, the simulation is going to require. Now, bear in mind, there are things like the overcommit feature that we have in place, which will, again, improve or, or degrade the number of virtual machines that you can run. But this tool is just designed to give you uh, a, a sense as to what's possible with the amount of, uh, or, sorry, what the resource requirements will be given uh, a particular set of virtual machines that you have. So that's available now. If you want to go take a look at it, uh, go and play with it. We'd love to your comments and feedback on that. All right, the first new feature that we want to pull up is system upgrade infrastructure. So we will be introducing in this new release um, a new panel, which will appear. So if you take a look, uh, you can see on the screen here, under the viral server tab, you'll have seen before the viral software uh, panel that's available. This is going to complement that. You'll get a notification saying, hey, there's a new uh, upgrade available. And obviously, this is only going to come into place once you've upgraded from your current release to this new release. So it's almost a case of here's the feature that you'll be able to use the next time you upgrade. But new functionality, what's in there, is to simplify the whole upgrade routine, you'll have a choice of different upgrade options. So you can see them here on the screen capture, a core upgrade, and you can see it's upgrading the Linux distribution, the viral core package itself, Auto NetKit, and all of the Maestro clients a full upgrade, which will upgrade all of the available virtual machine and container images, and then an advanced upgrade. So in advanced upgrade, you literally pick and choose from the menu, what would you like to upgrade, um, and then away you go. The system itself introduces this concept of a maintenance mode. So when you're preparing to do an upgrade, you'll pop the system into maintenance mode. It stops any new simulations from starting. Obviously, if there are simulations that are running right now, um, those will continue, the, the, those won't be shut down. You won't be able to progress until that simulation is terminated. But once it has terminated, uh, any new simulations will be prevented, and then you can go through an upgrade. The system will take you through the full upgrade, will get you to the point where it then says, OK, I need to now uh, complete the upgrade by performing a reboot. You'll press a confirmation button, and the system will reboot and come back up. But throughout that, uh, that routine, throughout that upgrade uh, sequence that's happening, the uh, system upgrade page that you see here will remain present. So even through the reboot, it will then bring that system uh, back up to the point where the system is operational again, and you'll see the various confirmation messages that will give you the status of the system as it's gone through. So you get full log messages throughout. And the purpose really here is to do away with having to install one package and then another package and another package. So you literally just pick and choose. And if you want to do that singular uh, package at a time, um, the advanced package, uh, the, sorry, the advanced option that you see there on the right, that will give you that capability. 
Okay, um, a new function that we're adding in. Um, so we introduced some, uh, some time back now support for Git repositories. Um, so now um, when you go through the simulation launch capability in UWM, uh, if you select viral file from Git repository, as you can see here on the screen, there's now a browser. So if I've actually set up my Git repo, I can now uh, look through my environment look through my directories, pick the particular viral file I want rather than having to enter anything by hand. So literally just browsing, pick and choose, ready to go, launch, and away we are, and away we go with our simulation. Okay, the big uh, announcement. Um, you may have seen uh, about a week or so ago, maybe a little bit longer than that, that we announced that we now have OpenStack clusters running on Packet. Uh, so with the packet.net guys, we now have the scripts in place and there's a full tutorial available which will take you through uh, not just spinning up one server um, like you would run at home uh, on your systems, um, but having a cluster. So anything up to um, one controller and four compute nodes, so a total of five computers running in a cluster configuration from a single configuration file, the Terraform file just telling you, okay, you, know, you configure it, you tell the system how many nodes you want. Um, nothing additional required, and then the system will come up. Obviously, uh, you've now got not just one uh, server up and running, you've now got this cluster, so it does increase uh, the charge that you'll get if you're running on the packet.net platform. So a full uh, tutorial video is posted. Uh, please do take a look. You can choose to use uh, either of the two uh, systems that Packet uh, provide today, so either the bare metal one, the 32 gig system, or the bare metal three, the 128 gig system. So you could have you know, four, five, 128 gig servers up and running um, and be running some very, very intensive workloads on that environment. But the, uh, the news is now you can do this locally. So with the new release that's coming, um, you will be able to run a cluster locally. So if you have, for example, a little ESXi server sitting at home, or maybe a couple of machines, um, some bare metal systems that you could use, um, you will be able to grab a new image that we'll be providing. So not just the standard viral server image, but also a, a new compute node image um, and install that. So you'll have one system, just your regular viral server. That's then gonna be uh, altered slightly. A few configuration uh, changes that have to be done there to convert that to become a cluster controller. And then a new image, the compute node then being installed on the additional devices. There is some networking that's gonna be required between all the various computers. Um, and then some configuration steps just to bring everything up and running. And then you will have a cluster. So what does this actually mean? Well, if I've got a configuration, so as per the diagram here, so I've got one controller and three compute nodes, now my virtual machines, instead of all running on my controller, they're now distributed across the available compute resources. So if you have a simulation, which is too big to run on just one controller, you know, you've only got a certain amount of memory there, let's say you've got eight gigs and you know, four cores, but if I've got now two or three or four devices, all with only eight gig, well, I'm now able to throw that um, you know, 32 plus, uh, well, sorry, 32 or so uh, gig uh, at the problem and obviously utilize the compute resources that I have available with my virtual machines now being distributed across all of those devices. So this is not a case of um, a simulation or, or, or stringing multiple simulations together and using flat networking to get communication between them. This is a single simulation being distributed automatically across all of the available compute nodes, all of the networking between the virtual machines being taken care of. You run it, you operate it just like you would be doing when you're communicating with your regular viral server. There's no difference in the operation in respect to how you interact with the system and uh, you know, all the capabilities are exactly as you would have seen before. So um, we wanna take a quick look at that. So a diagram, and this will all be included with the installation instructions. So there is networking required, whether you do this uh, on an ESXi system and you have multiple virtual machines running on an ESXi system, pretending to be, or oh, sorry, um, serving the roles of controller and n-many compute nodes, or whether you're doing a bare metal system, you will need to set up com uh, networking communication between all of the devices. So um, with ESXi, this is gonna be using uh, the ESXi vSwitch configurations to, to build the various networks. 
if you're doing this with bare metal systems, then yeah, you, you know, with a little switch and a bunch of uh, RJ45 connectors, you'll be bringing this environment up. But uh, that, can be, that uh, configuration is what you're going to need. So let's take a quick look at that in operation. So let me just switch over to sharing. And that should be coming up. There we go. Okay, so this is just the uh, um, the, the resource page that I mentioned before. So here you can see, you know, if I want to dial in, um, you know, four IOSV nodes, and let me have a couple of uh, IOSV L2s. And here we can see it's calculated. I'll need four gig and two CPU cores in order to, to, to run that environment. So here we are. If I am now running on an OpenStack cluster, so this is actually running with a couple of uh, with two compute nodes and one controller node. We have this running on top of ESXi. So um, when you log in, and I'm logged in as guest, this looks exactly the same as it had before. I have a simulation that I've started up. You'll notice a couple of differences here. So normally we get the table here filled out with all the external connections, but not in this case. Here we're seeing some devices which are reporting none. Well, this actually indicates that I've got some nodes, so one, three, four, and five, that are actually distributed out to my other compute nodes. So we can see this if we click on uh, the VM control and click on nodes. Here we can actually see you know, which of the virtual machines is distributed where. So we are running uh, some devices on the viral, on the, the viral server itself, so, so our controller, and we have some devices which have been distributed out to the compute nodes. So Z, from a functional perspective, there's no real difference. Um, we do get some different outputs that, that are showing up. So that's just loading now. So we will see, here we can see, so instead of just having the normal, the one area here, which we'd normally see, so just saying, you know, the name of my server, now I can see I've got compute one and compute two. And again, I'm seeing some of the resource load that's uh, being reported from those particular devices. Um, so that's all up and running. I just want to show you a couple of other uh, pieces in here. Um, so first up, uh, a new feature that we're also introducing. So when I've got my simulation up and running, and again, you know, this is exactly the same whether it's running on a single node or whether it's running on uh, a cluster configuration like we have here, we're now introducing this new traffic functionality. So click on the show traffic with the, the little car. I've got this uh, simulation that's up and running. And we're now getting live traffic counters from every interface in our simulation. So here I've got 25 plus interfaces, and this is now showing me traffic as it's passing through between all the various nodes. Hopefully you can see all of those counters updating as we go through. And we'll have a graphing feature so I can select my interfaces. So I, I wanna take a look at all the traffic that's passing from uh, node one, press add graph. And we now have down at the bottom um, new graphing capability. So you'll be able to then, again, you can turn on the particular filters. So as we roll over the devices, I can then see the traffic from the particular devices. So here we've got RX, TX, you'll be able to live stream this. So you'll get the, up, uh, the view as it updates, you know, zoom in, sc scroll across, all of that kind of capability. Um, so that's gonna be there in the new release. And then one other feature I just wanna show very quickly before we wrap up here. So live visualization, we've got a new function that's been added in. Um, hopefully you will have experimented with live visualization in the past, and you'll be familiar with this setup syslog function. So this provides us with a central syslog capability um, where all of the syslog uh, entry, sorry, all of the devices are set up to send their messages to a central syslog server. So we get that here on the syslog tab. Well, a new function that we have under actions is to then download to CSV. So I can then grab that data um, and then let me quickly just open that up and I'll just share that. There we go. So hopefully you can see that. So we get all of that syslog data just dumped down into a CSV form. So if you want to take that information, run that through an application like Splunk, for example, or you know or something else where you want to process that, that's now also going to be available for you. So a very, very quick overview of some of the new features and new functionality that are going to be coming up in the April release. And just to give you a taste of some of the new stuff that were coming after the April release, we're very close to getting uh, Docker capability integrated. So I know there were some people who were asking about 
Docker functionality and how that can be done. You will have seen a little snippet here and there of references to Docker. That is coming. We're getting closer and closer to actually having that out. It won't make it for the April release, but that should be in time for the release that will follow that. Okay, and that's all I had. Valerie, back to you. Thank you very much, Joel. All right, so um, we're wrapping up a little earlier than expected, so we will actually leave the Q&A on uh, for another um, three to five minutes just so you can get your questions in. And um, when you exit, make sure to make sure to fill out our survey and let us know what future topics you want to see in the webinars. Um, that's it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.